When you add an object in your game, it stays there unless you program it to move using GML. But there is an easy way to visually animate an object and give it a looping animation or a one-time animation that plays whenever you want. The sequence editor in GameMaker is where you animate your sprites, objects, and even sounds, and then place the animation in a room or play it in-game at any time. The Windy Woods template in GameMaker has a coin pickup, which has a nice spinning animation, but it doesn't actually move within the game. So let's use the sequence editor to give it an idle animation and a special animation that plays when the coin is collected. Create a new project using the Windy Woods template or use one of your own projects. From the asset browser, create a new sequence asset and name this seq underscore coin. The sequence editor will open on the left. Now from your list of objects under environment and then items, select obj coin. This is the in-game coin object that the player can collect. Drag it and then drop it into your sequence. In the canvas, move it and make sure it's in the center of the sequence. Now in the dope sheet here, you can see the whole length of the sequence. This is the coin object that you just added and it has its own track. This track doesn't last for the whole sequence though. So let's right click on the asset key here and select stretch asset key. Now the track lasts throughout the whole sequence. Now the sequence itself plays for 60 frames, which is a bit excessive for my coin animation. Yours may be different. So based on my animation, I'll set the length of the sequence to 54 frames, so the coin animation loops perfectly. We do want the sequence to loop, which doesn't happen by default, so click here to enable looping. Now to animate anything in a sequence, you use keyframes. You add a keyframe at any point of time on your track, and a keyframe can have its own position, rotation, or some other property. Say you added three keyframes to the coin track with different positions, then the coin would animate between those positions as the sequence played. Now let's animate our coin by changing its position using keyframes. Expand your coin track here and select the position parameter. If you don't have one, you can add it from here. In the dope sheet, take your playhead to the first frame. If you don't already have a keyframe here, then click on this button to create one. Then take your playhead to the middle of the sequence. For me, that's frame 27. Add a keyframe here. And then finally add another keyframe at the very end of your sequence. You can now give each one of these keyframes a different position, rotation, or even scale, and it will animate between these keyframes as the sequence plays. For this animation, we want the first and last keyframes to stay where they are and we'll only modify the position in the middle keyframe. So take your playhead to the middle keyframe and select that keyframe. In the canvas, select your coin track and then use this red arrow to move it up. Now play the animation and you can see that the coin moves up and down and it already looks much more alive. So you've just created your first animation, but the movement here is very robotic as the coin moves up and down in a very linear fashion. Let's make it a bit smoother using curves. Select the position parameter, click here to go into curve mode. This parameter doesn't use a curve, it uses regular keyframes. So let's convert it into a curve by clicking here. You now have a curve for this track that you can see here and it has two channels, X and Y. Because we are only moving the coin vertically, select the Y track, click here to open the curve library and change its type from linear to Bezier. Your curve will now be, well, more curvy than it was before, which results in smoother movement. And you can make it even smoother by selecting a point and extending its handle. I'll do the same for the rest of the points as well. Play your animation now and the coin's movement will now appear much more natural. Let's place our new animating coin inside the game. 
Open RM level 1, which is the first level in this project. In the layers panel, let's add a new asset layer where you can place sequences directly. I'll rename this to sequences. Now from your asset browser, drag your SEQ coin sequence and place it in the room. I'll place three of them here. I'll also open the instances layer and delete the old coin instances. Run the game and you will now see your coins animating. And you can also collect them because they are just your same old coin objects which are just moving around because of the sequence. So now if there's any object in your game that you want to animate, just put it in a sequence, animate it and then put that sequence in your level using an asset layer. Now here I've created a new animation of the coin flying away. This coin is only a sprite and not an object because we don't need any coin logic here. It uses the position, scale and rotation parameters with a curve for the position. This should play when a coin is collected. So find and open the obj player object and here open its collision event with obj coin. In this event, let's add this to create a sequence in the game. It will create the new seq coin collect sequence at the position of the other instance which is the coin. It will be created in our new sequences layer. So if there is a room that has a coin object, it now needs to have this sequences layer otherwise we'll get an error that the layer doesn't exist. Now in the game, whenever you collect a coin, you will see this animation. So you can create your own animations using any sprites or objects and play them at any time in your game. So go ahead and experiment with sequences, watch this tutorial to improve your game even further and I'll see you in the next video.